Datuk Sri Anwar to deliver national statement at Unga 78. Rahma imported rice sales begin nationwide. Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight. I'm Sahi Samshuddin. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim will deliver Malaysia's national statement at the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA 78, tonight. He is expected to begin his speech at the United Nations headquarters at about 9.30 a.m. local time or 9.30 p.m. Malaysian time. The Prime Minister is expected to share Malaysia's efforts in dealing with the climate crisis to achieve the 2030 Agenda, the country's roadmap under the Malaysia Madani framework, as well as several other global issues. This is Datuk Sri Anwar's first appearance as Prime Minister at the annual gathering. This year's theme for the general debate is rebuilding trust and reuniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress and sustainability for all. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim today met with his counterparts from Thailand, Iraq as well as the United States Climate Envoy. The meeting were held on the sideline of the 78th United Nations General Assembly UNGA in New York. It was Dato Sri Anwar's first official engagement with Freta Tavisin since the Thai property developer became Prime Minister last month. The 30-minute meeting was also attended by cabinet ministers from both sides. The Premier said besides discussing ways to strengthen the nation's bilateral ties, they also spoke on various issues including borders, peace process in southern Thailand and other regional issues of mutual interest. Meanwhile, during the meeting with his Iraqi counterpart, Mohammed Shia al-Sudani, Dato Sri Anwar said the matters discussed include ways to further strengthen their ties and explore new areas of cooperation. The Prime Minister also told Mohammed Shia that Malaysia will reopen its embassy in Baghdad, Iraq, which has been closed for the past 20 years. Dato Sri Anwar also spent some time meeting with the United States President Joe Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry, who was the U.S. Secretary of State from 2013 to 2017 under the administration of President Barack Obama. Among the topics discussed were the environment, renewable energy and global warming, which is causing massive effects worldwide. Dato Sri Anwar also expressed the desire to continue working with the U.S. on the transitions to renewable energy, methane gas emissions reduction, climate finance and technology. The Premier also attended a discussion session with members of the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, a non-partisan independent think tank that promotes understanding of international relations and foreign policy. During the session, Dato Sri Anwar listened to and shared Malaysia's policies and perspectives on international relations, the global stage and geopolitics with the Council. He said he appreciated their invitation and hoped that such a discussion could continue in the future. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living has started selling imported rice at Rahma prices in every Rahma sales program across the country. Acting Minister Dato Armizan Momali said beginning today, consumers will be able to get 5 kilograms of imported rice at a price not exceeding 15 ringgit and a 10 kilogram bag at a price below 30 ringgit. Uh, melalui program uh, jualan Rahma, uh, kita akan uh, menganjurkan, melaksanakan pendekatan mitigasi. Uh, iaitu uh, melalui program jualan Rahma ini, kita akan tambah bekalan beras. Dan uh, kita akan gunakan beras import. Eh, sebab uh, alasannya adalah uh, kita tidak mahu mengganggu, menjadi penyumbang kepada gangguan bekalan beras tempatan di pasaran, di sektor runcit. Atas sebab itu, kita telah membuat keputusan bahawa kita akan menambah bekalan beras import dalam program Jalan Rahma, namun pada kadar beras Rahma. The price of imported rice offered is cheaper than what is sold in the market, which is usually priced at 35 to 40 ringgit and more for the retail sector. 
He said this is a measure to deal with the temporary disruption of local rice supply and the increase in the price of imported rice. The initiative to establish a multi-fuel station is evidence of the Sarawak government's commitment to lead the energy transformation efforts in the country. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation Chang Lee Kang said the initiative that is implemented through SEDC Energy Sinjan Brahad, a subsidiary of Sarawak Economic Development Corporation, is a significant step forward in creating a more sustainable and innovative energy ecosystem. Chang said this following his visit to Petros multi-fuel station in Kuching to observe the progress of the integrated hydrogen refueling station. He said this initiative could boost the use of hydrogen for green mobility and support the government's initiatives to achieve greenhouse gas reduction and decarbonisation goals. Chang said the hydrogen-based energy ecosystem in Malaysia is aligned with the national hydrogen agenda through the Hydrogen Economy and Technology Roadmap, HETR, which is set to be launched soon. He added that HETR is expected to establish a hydrogen economy in Malaysia, generating national income of up to 12.1 billion ringgit. Enhancing cooperation and promoting best practices in alternative dispute resolution techniques, including arbitration, that is the objective of Memorandum of Understanding MOU signed between the Asian International Arbitration Center, AIAC Kuala Lumpur, and School of African and Oriental Studies, University of London Arbitration and Dispute Resolution Center, SADRC in London. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Law and Institutional Reform, Datuk Sri Azalina Othman said through a statement that the UK and Malaysia have a long shared history of collaborating to tackle mutual challenges and the signing of the MOU underscores the death of the two countries' relationship and commitment to advancing global best practices in arbitration. The MOU will see the AIAC and SADRC further develop teaching and research activities in alternative dispute resolution in line with international best practice to coordinate efforts to promote the use of alternative dispute resolution. This innovative partnership will not only benefit both countries but also the broader Asian and African regions. Malaysia's inflation remained unchanged at 2% in August, similar to the growth rate recorded in July this year. The Department of Statistics Malaysia, Dawson, said the inflation rate recorded in August was mainly due to the slower growth in restaurants and hotels, food and non-alcoholic beverages as well as miscellaneous goods and services. Dawson said the Food and Non-Alcoholic Beverages Group contributes 29.5% of total consumer price index weight. It added the inflation rate for the transport sector for August did not record any increase as compared to negative 0.4% in July. Compared with other countries, Dawson said the inflation rate of 2% in Malaysia was lower than that in the Eurozone at 5.3%, the Philippines 5.3%, South Korea 3.4%, Indonesia 3.3% and Vietnam 3%. However, the rate was higher than Thailand which pre-recorded 0.9% inflation rate and China 0.1%. On core inflation, the department said it moderated to 2.5% in August versus 2.8% in July, but it still surpassed the overall national inflation rate of 2%. The highest increase was recorded by the Food and Non-Alcoholic Beverages Group with a 5.1% increase, followed by the Restaurants and Hotels Group, which rose 4.7% and transport up to 3.6%. Bank Negara Malaysia's BNM International Reserve amounted to 111.5 billion US dollars as at 15 September compared with 112.2 billion US dollars as at 15 August this year. The central bank said that the reserve position was sufficient to finance 5.2 months of imports of goods and services and was one time the total short-term external debt. In a statement released today, BNM said the main components of the International Reserve were Foreign Currency Reserve, International Monetary Fund Reserve's position, Special Drawing Rights, Gold and other reserve assets. Meanwhile, total assets stood at 623.80 billion ringgit, comprising gold and foreign exchange and other reserves. 
including special drawing rights, Malaysian government papers, loans and advances, land and buildings and other assets. BNM also said capital and liabilities include paid-up capital, reserve, currency in circulation, deposit by financial institutions, federal government deposits, other deposits, bank negara papers and allocation of special drawing rights. Coming up in our foreign segment, Philippine issues, health warning as volcano brings smog to capital. A small but restive volcano near the Philippine capital Manila spewed above average sulfur dioxide and volcanic smog today, prompting authorities to close its schools in five cities and dozens of towns and urge people to stay indoors. The State Volcanology and Seismology Institute said it observed upwelling of hot volcanic fluids in the town volcanoes crater lake, resulting in the emission of volcanic gases. The alert remained at level 1 on a 5-level scale, denoting a slight increase in volcanic earthquake and steam or gas activity. Authorities suspended today's classes in dozens of towns and cities of Cavite Laguna and Batangas provinces adjacent to Taal Volcano in five cities in the capital region. The Aviation Authority told pilots to avoid flying close to the volcano summit as airborne ash and ballistic fragments from sudden explosion may pose hazards to aircraft. Located in the scenic lake in Batangas province near Manila, the 311-metre Taal is among the most active of 24 volcanoes in the Philippines. In January 2020, it spewed a column of ash and steam as high as 15 kilometres, forcing more than 100,000 people to evacuate and dozens of flight cancellations as heavy ash fell as far away as Manila. Rupert Murdoch has stepped down as the chairman of Foxcom and News Corp, ending more than a seven-decade career during which he created a media empire stretching from Australia to the United States. The company said on Thursday his son, Lachlan Murdoch, will become the sole chairman of News Corp and continue as the chair and CEO of Fox. Lachlan takes over the Murdoch empire as the media industry is battered by challenges ranging from the decline in traditional television viewership to the recent defamation lawsuit with Dominion Voting System that Fox settled for $787.5 million. Earlier this year, Murdoch, 92, scrapped a plan that would have reunited his media empire by merging Fox and News Corp. Murdoch, who has near controlling stakes in both companies, will be appointed chairman emeritus of both companies. Next up in sports, Julian Nagelsmann named Germany coach at head of Euro 2024. Julian Nagelsmann will lead host Germany into Euro 2024 next summer. The German Football Federation, DFB, confirmed today that the 36-year-old had been appointed to succeed Hansi Flick in charge of the National Mannschaft with the contract running through to the end of the tournament next July. Nagelsmann was most recently at German champions Bayern Munich who sacked him in March and replaced him with former Chelsea boss Thomas Tuchel. The DFV said Nagelsmann had been its unanimous choice to replace Flake, who was sacked earlier this month and with national team having lost four of their last five matches, including a 4-1 defeat to Japan. Nagelsmann's first matches in charge will be against two of the 2026 World Cup co-hosts, the United States and Mexico, next month. They are also due to take on Austria in November. Red Bull's runaway Formula 1 championship leader Max Verstappen roared back from his team's shock defeat in Singapore with a clear message to rivals at the Japanese Grand Prix. The, uh, the double world champion was a man on a mission at Suzuka, fastest in both practice sessions today and laying down a marker with his first lap out of the pits before staying on top throughout the day. The second session ended two minutes early when Alpine's Pierre Gasly locked up and crashed at the Dagner 2, bringing out red flags. The Dutch 25-year-old lap with a best time of 1 minute, 31.647 seconds, 0.626 seconds quicker than Ferrari's Singapore winner Carlos Sainz. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc was second in the second session and 0.320 seconds slower than Verstappen. Verstappen won in Japan last year from pole position and arrived in Suzuka expecting his car to be back in a dominant position.